One of the things I love about being a professional historian is that so few people believe me when I tell them that that's actually what I do for a living. And I think there's a really interesting reason for this. For a lot of people, there's an association between being old and wizened by a lifetime of study in libraries, a lifetime of transcribing letters, a lifetime of writing academic journals, and the whole business of producing history. But in fact, history is far more creative than that. There's a great deal of value to be had in coming up with new ideas, coming up with new approaches, coming up with new subjects to study. And this makes history far more democratic than you might suspect. It means that someone with a very fresh idea or approach can change the way that we understand the past as significantly as someone who has spent a lifetime studying a particular subject. Now, there are actually loads of historians out there doing this kind of new history, approaching it in a new way. And the purpose of this series of videos is to take you out there, to introduce you to them. And I'll be asking them what they do, but more particularly, I think, I'm going to be asking them why they have chosen the subject that they've chosen. This whole business of why you study a subject, I don't think gets enough coverage. It's absolutely fascinating because if you think about it, I mean, look around you, you can write a history of anything you can see. There are millions, there are hundreds of millions of subjects that you can actually choose. So the question of why you choose a particular one is very personal and it's very interesting. In my case, I write about ships and the sea and particularly about the age of sail. Now, I don't really know why I'm interested in this. I, I just know that I'm happy at the sea, in the sea, on the sea, and particularly writing about the sea. I like thinking about the way that humans used to interact with the sea. I like the way that the subject is almost protected by its own language. To write about the sea in the Age of Sail, you have to know what a mizzen topmast is, you have to know what a spritsail is. And I really like the way that the subject is protected by this strange and ancient language. I also like the way that in the Age of Sail, the whole global system of trade and war is completely dominated by the way that the winds work in the global wind systems of the Atlantic, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. I love the fact that somewhere strange like Gibraltar, which is just a rock stuck on the bottom of Spain, was crucial to global strategy. I love the fact that of all of the West Indian islands, Barbados was the most important because of its geographic location. And you can only understand this if you understand the wind systems. So for me, it was a puzzle. And I went into it wanting to understand the solution to that puzzle. I really think that history, and particularly this point, this process of creating history deserves a far better reputation. Compare it with science. If you think of a scientist, you think of a, of a man in a white lab coat with goggles on and a Bunsen burner doing science, creating science, doing experiments. But with history, you think of a 300,000 word scholarly tome, something that's already been produced. You think of someone giving a big lecture. You don't ever really think about the process of creating that history. I very much hope that this series of videos inspires you to think about which of those millions of subjects you would choose to write about the past. And if you have the time and the inclination to then go on and to start writing your own history, to start thinking about the past in new ways. You can follow this series of videos on my website, sam-willis.com, and on a dedicated page on the BBC History magazine website, historyextra.com. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter. At the moment, I'm shipwreck underscore Sam. Mm -hmm.